I've made a lot of WDTs, and in the process of making them, I've also tried a lot of different needles. So in front of me, I have four different size needles. Here, I have a 0.25 millimeter needle, a 0.3 millimeter needle, a 0.35 millimeter needle, and a 0.4 millimeter needle. So the 0.4 millimeter needle is the one that you'll see most commonly recommended on the internet, on various discussion forums, because they're thin, they're thinner than a paperclip, um, and they're fairly sturdy. You know, on the opposite end of the spectrum, you'll have some manufacturers actually recommending a much thinner needle, uh, so down to a 0.2 even, or 0.25 millimeter needle. So today I wanna to show you what it actually looks like to WBT which, with each of these needle diameters, so that when you're going out and you're buying your own needles, you'll have some idea of what it's like to WDT with each of them. And in conclusion, I'll tell you which diameter needle that I recommend for use with my tools, as well as the diameter that I personally use and, and why I choose to use that particular diameter. So let's just cut right into what it looks like to use these tools, starting with the uh, thinnest needle and then moving towards the thickest. So I've loaded a basket here with a bottom filter. So if you're curious about the bottom filter, I actually have a very quick demonstration in my water dialing video. You can take a look at that. I'll, I'll leave a link to that in this video in the upper right corner. Um, okay, so I've ground some coffee with my O. This is some decaf EA processed by Ritual, La Esmeralda, that I use to make my wife's lattes in the morning. Um, you can see that coming out of the O, it's fairly clumpy. So what I'll do here is I'll just WDT this with the uh, thinnest needles, starting with the 0.25 millimeter needle. And you can take a look at how that works. Uh, we'll re-WDT with the uh, other needle sizes. So starting with this very thin 0.25 millimeter needle, you can tell that it's very thin because they're, these needles are ultra flexible. They're just super flexible. So as you WDT this, you'll notice that the needles bend quite a bit. They bend quite a bit and because they bend, they tend to clump or push together. And as they push together, you can see that the spaces between the needles collapse. So when you're WDTing or when I'm WDTing, what I find is that um, it tends to make some channels or some grooves in the coffee. So you have to WDT relatively gently because if you go fast or you know if your motion is strange, you'll end up with a big kind of gouge. You can see that big gouge forming as you WDT. But if you WDT upwards, you know, you can still end up with what looks like a pretty good result, I think. So it's looking fairly even in the end. Um, so, you know, 0 0.25 millimeter needles, you would think that'd be really nice because they're so thin and they would just cut through the coffee. And they do, but if you're going really quickly, you can end up with like a big groove like that which I'm not a huge fan of, but you know, some people really like how thin these are and how easily they push through the coffee. Um, again, if you have a lot of needles and you don't have a lot of structural stability with those needles, like in this WDT, this may not be a good choice for you. If you have a tool with only four needles and they're pretty wide, widely spread apart or something like that, uh, you know, this might work really well for you, especially if you like these thinner needles. So why don't we try this 0 0.3 millimeter tool? So like the 0.2, millimeter tool. These are needles are quite thin, but they actually have a little bit more structural support. They're a little less bendy. So as you're WDTing, you actually end up with less of that big channel uh, forming because the needles themselves uh, are more resistant against the, um, you know, being pushed together by these coffee grounds. These coffee grounds don't impart a lot of force on the needles, but they do impart enough to to move the 0.25 millimeter needles together, whereas the 0.3 millimeter needles don't move quite as much. But they, you know, they still do bend. So um, you still end up, you can still end up in a situation where you're creating big channels because these, these needles bend together. Uh, but as long as you're more, uh, careful with these needles, a little bit more careful than you would be with the 0.25 millimeter needles, uh, these work really well. So as for the 0.35 millimeter needles, these are, again, you know, a little bit thicker, more structural. You know, this WT is able to stand up on its own. Um, so if you look at this now, it's definitely a lot more structural and you can be a little bit more aggressive 
And because the needles themselves don't bend quite as much, you know, the space between them um, while you're actually WDTing tends to stay a little bit more constant. They're not, they're not bunching up together as much. And so um, it just feels stronger and it really looks like it's cutting through the ground. Okay, so that's a 0 0.35. So the last one here is the 0 0.4. So these are the most structural. These are the hardest to bend. Um, and you know, they're the most sturdy. So if you want something robust, something strong, this is the one that I would suggest. So as you WDT, uh, th these needles are a little bit thicker. So you can see that it actually moves quite a bit of coffee um, because of the thickness of these needles. And you know, as you're going around, you can see that it's not quite as nice. It doesn't slice through at, as well as the 0 0.35 or even the 0 0.3 millimeters do. So these still work really well, um, especially if you, you know, WDT at multiple levels going up, then, you know, you're distributing, you know, each layer separately because, you know, when, when these needles are relatively far apart, they're creating a nice even layer on top. So any of these WDTs, if you're breaking just the top level, you'll see that they're not really forming uh, channels as much. It's when you're deep WDTing, it's when these needles are close together as you're like fully inserted that you'll see these channels forming. So any, any one of these WDTs, as long as you're WDTing, you know, in different vertical levels as you rise up, you know, do a couple circular passes at each level, um, you'll get a nice even bed on top. It's just that uh, with the 0 0.35 and the 0 0.3 millimeter needles, um, it's just not as obvious. This is 0 0.3. It's just not as obvious that these channels are forming um, when you're deep down in the basket. And here's a 0 0.35 again. Uh, it's a little bit uh, more obvious here with the 0 0.5 and the 0 0.3, but you know, uh, they both do a pretty good job. Okay, so which WDT is right for you? Just in my personal opinion, I really, I'm not a big fan of the 0 0.25 millimeter needle. It is very thin, it is very flexible, and when they flex together, they you know, form more of a broom than um, something that's gonna cut through the grounds. Um, so maybe if you have fewer needles, it's something you can use. Um, the other thing I don't like about these 0 0.25 millimeter needles is that they're very weak. So if you accidentally put it down too hard, you may end up bending them very easily. Um, so they're very fragile. And uh, I just don't recommend something this thin because there's just not a lot of material here. On the other end of the spectrum, you have the 0 0.4 millimeter needles, which, you know, when I first started, they worked, I thought they were amazing, especially compared to what I was using prior. Um, but you know, they're, uh, so they're very strong. So that's really nice about them. So if you're worried about damaging your needles from use, this is a good option to use. But if you saw in the video, I thought that they moved too much of the coffee at once, especially in a tool like this that has a lot of needles. The thickness of these needles actually contribute a lot to the movement of the ground. So it's a little bit too thick uh, for me to use on a daily basis, but I did use this needle, uh, this, this particular WTT with these 0.4 millimeter needles for a very long time and I was really happy with it. Um, later on, I, I tried the 0.3 and the 0.35 millimeter needles. So I actually recommend these 0.35 millimeter needles because they're a nice compromise between the thinness of the 0.3 millimeter needles and the robustness of the 0.4 millimeter needles. So this pretty strong, you know, it's kind of a compromise. You'll have, uh, you'll end up with a little bit of rigidity, but also because they're a little bit thinner, they don't tend to move the grounds as much. So if you watch the video, you can see that, um, you know, the 0 0.3 and 0 0.35 behave fairly similarly. Um, so I, I, that's why I recommend this particular one because it works almost as well or just as well as a 0 0.3. It's, you know, almost as robust as a 0 0.4. Um, so it's kind of got the best of both worlds. Me personally though, I use the 0 0.3 millimeter needles. And the reason I use that 0 0.3 millimeter needles is because I use paper filter bottoms. So bottom paper filters on my porta filter basket. And because of that, having something a little bit stronger, a little bit more robust, like the 0 0.35 millimeter needle means that when I'm going against the bottom of that, I'm, I'm likely to move that paper around. So because the 0 0.3 millimeter needles are a little bit more flexible, they're just, you know, imparting a little bit less force on that paper filter. And it's a little bit easier to keep that paper filter in place with a little bit of a thinner needle.
So the 0.3 millimeter needles work really well, but they're a little bit weaker. They're not quite as robust. They're a little bit more flexible. You have to be a little bit more careful with them. But if you're using a paper filter bottom, that weakness is actually a, a huge strong point. So, you know, I don't think you can go wrong with a 0.35 or a 0.3 millimeter needle. And honestly, if you're using a 0.4 millimeter needle or a 0.25 millimeter needle or even something thinner or something thicker, it should also be okay as long as you kind of go up the basket with each level, you know, leveling out each layer from the bottom to the top as you go along, I think it'll be okay. So that's the main goal here. In another video, I'm gonna talk about evenness of extraction and how that affects your extraction yield and ultimately the taste of your coffee. And the WDT, you know, in any size, in any iteration, um, is a great tool for helping you increase the evenness of your extraction and increase, uh, the amount of coffee that you're actually extracting. And it has a huge effect on taste. And whether or not you like that, you know, we'll find out later, but you know, just stay tuned for that next video.